Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining in on the fun. Uh, Christine and I have lots of information. We're going to try to squeeze into uh, 50 minutes today, uh, but we also invited some of our um, colleagues along too. We collaborate with so many different uh, folks on campus, so it was hard to kind of just um, you know grab just a few, but we're hoping to be able to, to share some uh, best practices um, in the field, but also uh, that we've been able to, and lucky enough to um, develop on campus uh, with our partners. Um, but just a, a few introductions uh, as we uh, get started. Hi everyone, my name is Christine Barkley and I am one of the career services assistant directors in our office. I am the career coach for students that are interested in joining STEM and healthcare industries. And I have been at San Oswego now for mm, just over a year. I started last year right before COVID hit and have pretty much been remote the whole time. It's great to meet all of you, whether you're live with us or watching the recording. And I am Jackie Wallace. Um, I'm one of the folks on campus that um, came here as a student um, and refused to leave. <laughs> uh, but my uh, industry area is education, uh, public and human services. Uh, so we are just gonna start off with a, a little poll, just a check in and um, so if you notice on the screen, uh, there's a couple of ways to participate. Uh, one of which you can go to the website, so pollev.com. And the other is the um, text. So if you can see on the screen, the poll is pollev.com forward slash Christine MOS 948, um, or the text, um, you can text um, 37607 um, to the user Christine Mo which is MOS 948. So who do we have joining us today? I can tell by, you know, just looking at uh, the Zoom as well, but we'd love to see who our audience is. Uh, so that way we are gearing up for Q and A, but also sharing out um, and also probing for some uh, input uh, towards the end that uh, we know where it's coming from. And folks that are looking at this recording, uh, we would love for you to reach out as well as you have some ideas and thoughts or questions uh, as well. So feel free to follow up with us at any time. So Christine, is that live now? And Yep, so we are live. It's telling me I can't share my screen while you're sharing yours. So I don't think we have the settings set where I can boot you. So there you go. Why hey. don't you share so that way we can see? Perfect. Let's get full screen. All right, so we have some campus staff. Um, Dean. Now we have some faculty too. Faculty. <laughs> Still trying to maybe figure out the poll everywhere. Oh, there we go. There we go. I love watching it change. <laughs> yes, it is in real time. So as people change their um, information in here, uh, we get to watch a great tool that John has probably talked a lot about before in some of his research. Lots of different polling options. So Jackie, I'm faculty as well as an academic advisor too. So. <laughs> All the above. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. we should allow folks to do more than one. Yeah. <laughs> we should put faculty slash advisor next time. Let me see if I can do both. <laughs> no, a lot of, I feel like a lot of our faculty and a lot of folks on the call today um, yeah. probably hold more than one role that's listed here um, uh, because of their engagement with students. So, yeah, so it tells me you can no longer respond to this. It allows one response per participant. Okay. Gotcha. Well, thanks for noting that. And I think probably we have some other folks that are joining us today that also have multiple roles. All right. So if you want to stop sharing, I'll do the popcorn again. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. So one of the first things that 
uh, we wanted to talk with all of you today about is um, just career readiness. Um, and so there has been a focus recently, um, and I would say like the last couple of years on making sure that we are producing graduates that are career ready, helping them um, not only with their kind of career plans, but making sure that they're developing the skills that they need um, for when they join the world of work um, after. So if you wanna to head to the next slide, um, the National Association of Colleges and Employers um, is a, a professional association that our career services team, as well as career services teams across the country um, uh, joins and is a part of. And so they have defined career readiness as a foundation from which to demonstrate requisite core competencies that broadly prepare the college educated um, for success in the workplace and lifelong career management. So there's a couple key words there that I like to focus on. One obviously is career educated. Um, we all work in higher education at an institution. So focusing on those students that we work with. Um, a second kind of group of term, a group of words or a term is success in the workplace. Um, so obviously we want them to be prepared for the workplace, uh, but we also want them to be able to succeed in you know, the role that they are in. Uh, and then the last word that I like to kind of point out in this definition is lifelong. Um, I think uh, myself as well as the other career coaches in our office really focus on um, career management and teaching um, students the skills uh, and the knowledge and the tools that they may need to help them find their first job or, you know, maybe pick out their uh, graduate school or professional school, um, but really kind of broadening the work that we do and scaling it up so that we are helping students focus on the lifelong career management. Um, so when artificial intelligence lawyers or garbage engineers become occupations that are needed in the future, that they have the career readiness skills um, that they can successfully maybe gravitate or adjust their career plans uh, so that they can obtain those positions that are ever changing as we know with technology in many industries um, with the economy and technology always uh, kind of adding new and taking away occupations. I'll add in here too just the uh, the importance for equity um, for all of our students that that first job out of college really is so important because it really does determine so many things uh, throughout their um, career and their lifetime as well. So just the importance of, of focusing in on that um, is something that also um, really puts it to the forefront for us as well. So the National Association of Colleges and Employers, or NACE, as we refer to it on the career services world, uh, they define career readiness, and they also go through and define eight career readiness competencies, and they are the eight that you see here, so career and self-development communication, um, both verbal um, as well as written, critical thinking, equity and inclusion, leadership, professionalism, teamwork, and technology. Um, so we have these eight career readiness competencies that we focus on in the career services world, but that we like to educate others across campus as well um, to focus on and to kind of um, embed into their courses or embed into their degree programs or the work that they do with students um, to focus on these questions because these are the skills and the competencies that they will be asked about in future they should be highlighting on their application materials. Uh, and so the National Association of Colleges and Employers does have a really robust website and that um, it defines each one of these uh, career readiness competencies, as well as lists um, like sample behaviors for each one of these. So if I have a student that possibly comes you know, to me um, and is applying for a position um, where the company is very focused on equity and inclusion, they might, um, you know, come to me and ask, how do I show my skills in that area? How do I display those skills in that area? Maybe the cultural competency or whatnot. Um, obviously, we can do work with them to help them understand the definition as NACE has defined it, but also to kind of allow them to see those sample behaviors as well so they can connect with those and brainstorm from past experiences, maybe how they have had um, the opportunity to showcase um, that competency in a real world um, example. Uh, so if you are interested in learning more about them, you can definitely check out the career readiness page I'll throw in the chat. Um, and that will take you to the page where it defines career readiness, but will also take you to the eight competencies as well.
You know, the neat thing is, is oftentimes, even in the classroom, they're developing these skills, um, but they get stuck on how to articulate that. So, you know, their research projects, their um, group projects that, you know, I was a business major that I, I think back to, you know, even Management 261. So uh, it's kind of interesting to see that dynamic and one of the reasons why we, we love to collaborate. Yes. And thank you for keeping us on time. We're going to move now and do a fun activity about what employers want. So obviously with students, it's important that they understand the career readiness competencies um, that employers are looking for um, and kind of which of those are extremely important to employers. Um, so we have here a list of 10 attributes that employers seek for on a candidate's resume. Hopefully you'll see that these are very similar and overlap a ton with the career readiness competencies. Um, and for those of you that are joining us live, um, we're going to do a matching activity. If you're watching the recording, you can do this as well. We'll give you some time. Um, but I'd like you to take a few minutes now to um, think of these in a way um, and rank them from the top one to the 10th um, in terms of what employers are looking for on a candidate's resume. Um, so looking at this list, asking yourself, which of these top or which of these 10 skills, which is the first that you think um, employers have reported out to NACE that they're looking for on candidates' resumes? Um, do you think it's strong work ethic or technical skills, uh, analytical or quantitative skills, uh, flexibility and adaptability, uh, problem solving skills, initiative, communication skills, whether they are written, leadership, the opposite um, of written verbal communication skills or ability to work in a team. Um, so if you have an idea of which one you would put as the top um, attribute that employers seek for on a candidate's resume, please feel free to unmute yourself and share with us what you think or if um, working through the chat is more comfortable for you, um, then feel free to throw in the chat which of these top 10 skills you think is the number one um, skill that employers are seeking on a resume. This is where we need the wheel of, or the Jeopardy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone throwing in the chat. Kristen said communication skills, verbal. Um, Dr. Froyle said problem solving or maybe communication skills. Um, it's very hard to look at this list and start to narrow it down. Um, I feel like into one or if you were actually matching all of them um, from one to 10, um, because these are all really important skills as we know as we do our work with college students. Um, Judy had said work ethic and communication. Uh, Mamanta said work ethic and <laughs> communication. So while it's good that we have some um, kind of on uh, thinking on the same scale. Um, so this um, is actually uh, a survey that the National Association of Colleges and Employers does every year. So it's called the Job Outlook um, Survey, and it comes with a final report. This was just shared in January of 2020. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, we'll go ahead and share with you the answers. So um, maybe a surprise to you or maybe not a surprise, the number one um, attribute employers look for on a candidate's resume is actually the ability to work in a team. Um, I have given this kind of presentation to students before and have um, asked them if that was surprising or not. So I kind of want to ask you all, uh, is seeing ability to work in the a team surprising to anyone. Um, feel free to unmute yourself or throw your thoughts in the chat. Uh, Cause I know, I don't think we had anyone throw in the chat that, um, no, we had communication and problem solving and work ethic. Uh, Mamanta said my students dislike it strongly <laughs> working in teams. Now you have, you know, some data to back it up, right? <laughs> Especially the school of business. I remember, you know, most of my life was working on teams. Yes. Yeah, and this is what I tell them that in the real world, you will always work in a team, you will never work solo. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they dislike working on a project in a team. It's, it's just very, very difficult for them to coordinate their time and everything. Yes. yes. 
And we obviously are extremely thankful for, um, you know, our faculty that are instructing students um, that are incorporating some of these um, attributes into their courses. For example, group projects is probably one that you do often in your courses, um, which helps them, um, you know, further develop this skill. Um, I have been challenged by students before. Um, I work with STEM, STEM students or students interested in going into healthcare. I have been challenged by students before that have asked me, well, what if I'm in a lab position and it's solely I'm the only one doing that research that type of thing um, the idea that I usually share with them is you probably have to share your results with at least one other person if not a group of people whether that's a board um, or a group of physicians or something like that um, so well you while you might be doing the actual tasks on your own your ability to work with other people your ability to work in a team for that larger um, purpose or that larger goal is still really important because you're sharing your results um, or your data, um, your findings with a larger group. So even when students think they can stump me here in the ability to work with a team because they dislike it, like you've shared, um, it is really important. And I have been able to come up with, you know, examples for students based off of the type of work that they're doing. Um, so um, the next thing that we'd like to kind of talk about, so we've talked a little bit about skills. The next thing that we'd like to kind of highlight is the most influential factors employers consider when deciding between two equally qualified job candidates. Um, so again, this is a similar survey that NACE does um, and includes information um, from the survey of the thousands of employers that they um, checked in with. Um, and so you'll see the 2021 average influence rating as as well as the 2020 average influence rating. So you'll see that they are very similar. Um, and our Excel folks on the line will find this really beneficial to see, um, as we all will. But you'll see the first one um, that has been included here has is completed an internship within that organization specifically. So when an employer is looking at two qualified, equally qualified job candidates, if one of them has completed an internship within the organization, that is a heavier influence for um, receiving a job offer from um, that employer. Um, obviously, very close to that um, is just completing an internship that is related to what they do. So completed a really, um, an internship in that industry so that they have gained experience um, just in that general way. Um, so they have similar exposure to, you know, tools and technologies, responsibilities, that type of thing. Um, and so obviously we know high impact practices um, such as internships that are listed here are extremely important. Um, one thing that I don't believe NACE um, asks employers about that I would love for them to start asking about are other high impact practices. Some of them are listed here, but like capstone classes are not listed. And that's something that I would be very interested in seeing because I think that is extremely beneficial as well. And a lot of our students work with different employers and are gaining experience possibly similar to internships through a capstone course. Uh, but you'll also, he you'll also see here major leadership experience. So getting involved on campus, joining a club or an organization um, early on to learn what they do, but then also, um, you know, applying for or running for a leadership position, um, whether it's a club sport or whether it's an organization that's related to their academics, or maybe even just something that's their hobby, um, that can be extremely helpful as well. Uh, general work experience, involvement in extracurricular activities, high GPA, um, has no work experience and done volunteer work. So I really like to show students this to give them a picture of what employers are looking for. Long gone are the days where employers are interested in a student having a 3-9 and no work experience or no involvement on campus or in their surrounding community. Um, I think from this, we can see that a student that might have a little bit of a lower GPA, such as like a 3-2 with internship experience or experience on campus, um, in a extracurricular activity um, is going to be um, looked at and considered differently um, and qualified in a different way for those jobs than someone who maybe has a high GPA but doesn't have a lot of that experience. Um, and so you can, uh, when working with students, you can utilize this knowledge that we have shared with you, this information to um, help them see what experiences that employers are looking for and what skills employers are looking for. So if they are coming to you for advice on an upcoming interview or they're asking you 
continue to review their resume, you can take this information that we have um, shared with you um, to kind of help them make sure that they are meeting the needs and what an employer is looking for. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about different ways that we can collaborate as we go on. Um, one of the last things, in case you're really interested in hearing some um, from three of our awesome Oswego alumni um, in HR, in recruiting positions specifically, talk about what employers really want. We do have a session recording from our Imagine 2021 um, program that we did in January. It was a five-week career development program that we did in collaboration with the alumni office. This session is a recording that is on our YouTube, um, but if you are interested in in that I can throw that um, link in the chat because it's an awesome um, opportunity to a hear from our um, successful alumni um, that are in recruiting and HR roles but there's also some information that we get into about application materials how do you want to see a resume what's the importance of a cover letter those type of things so if you're interested in learning more you can definitely check that out as well Thank you for putting all those in the chat. I can't run the Zoom in the chat at the same time. <laughs> no worries. So, uh, we have lots of uh, links to share with you today to um, continue to get that information after our presentation. Uh, so we also wanted to uh, highlight, um, and so if you're just jumping on, we've invited uh, some of our uh, campus partners uh, to join us, although there's many, many more, but we didn't have enough time to have a full day workshop. Um, so uh, highlighting some folks that are, are here today, uh, but just a little bit of a snapshot too, is that there's so many high impact practices uh, happening on campus. Um, Christine had talked about uh, some of them already when uh, you're looking at, uh, employers are looking at candidates, what they're looking for too. So anyway, from internships to, to capstones, uh, our office as well as Excel and, and other offices on campus um, have embedded um, career education, specifically dedicated courses um, to that as well. So the professional skills course through Excel. Um, we also in career services have a couple uh, exploratory courses for students to engage in that uh, process as well. And you'll notice that uh, many folks that are joining us on the call today have, um, you know, brought in uh, us into the classes as well as uh, some of our employers and alumni as well to engage in those conversations and start to build that network and those competencies. Uh, you'll notice a lot of events on campus, um, one of which I've highlighted here uh, was collaboration uh, with HDB uh, 403 with uh, Mamsa. Uh, and I, we brought in uh, a number of folks. This one uh, will happen to be the DSS to talk about civil service and um, working in their um, agency as well. And a lot of networking events. So it's uh, often uh, best practice for ourselves and the alumni office to collaborate in a number of events to, uh, to connect, to build those networks, but also to uh, help students explore, you know, what are uh, employers looking for? What does it mean to be in this career field? Uh, what tools do I need to build? What experiences uh, should I be seeking out uh, even now? Um, and even, you know, as a first year student or a student coming in. Uh, so a lot of those you can even uh, see on our YouTube channel uh, under the Imagine Events too, uh, and some many others. Um, we are continuing to develop additional website, um, including the Wicked Whammy, which most departments uh, have highlighted on their websites to just get students wheels thinking about uh, what can I do with this major and what are the opportunities and what are professional associations I can start to get involved in. Uh, that's one area I would love to see uh, students get involved in is that they think about, uh, all right, I'm at Oswego, what can I be involved in? And they, you know, get involved in the Human Development Club and in ACTUS and other uh, really awesome organizations, but they don't necessarily they think about you should be doing that you know in your career too um and being on those boards you know like our national association of college employers um i'm participating in a virtual conference all this week uh, but get students thinking about what does that look like and how can they get connected to now um to those professional associations uh, many of which are our clubs are national associations too so we continue to develop those in addition to um, resources specifically for different identity infinity groups, um, which are, we're developing um, right now, really showcasing on our social media. Um, and then of course, so many different skill building assignments and workshops. So um, we have been doing this for many, many years, um, anywhere from being able to articulate all the awesome stuff they're doing in and outside of the classroom uh, into their marketing materials while they're um, applying for opportunities, you know, during those uh, interview process. So um, we've been collaborating uh, specifically even with the um, tech ed department in my industry area to do mock interviews uh, with their teacher candidates. Uh, oftentimes with a big cohort, we're also bringing in uh, school districts to assist us with that process and, and many, many more. Um, and so we look forward 
to uh, many future collaborations um, and sharing opportunities um, with the remainder of our session today and what those might look like. Uh, but to highlight a few, um, and as folks are on the call today, um, Mamta, can I uh, put the mic over to you for a minute just to talk about a couple uh, things that you've been doing and uh, whether we've collaborated or not? So yes, um, with the career services, we actually collaborated quite a bit this spring. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I owe half of my salary for that course to Jackie Wallace <laughs> <laughs> because she helped me quite a bit. Um, so thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, I think Jackie really helped my students. Um, so she brought in a lot of guest speakers from other places. My students were interested in uh, learning more about social work, learning more about um, you know, people who are working as clinical psychologists or educational psychologists. Um, and what is their routine like? What, what do, uh, their struggles are like and all those things. So Jackie brought in a lot of guest speakers in one of the sessions, I think there were four from various places and students had a lot of questions to ask about the career options that are available and the skills that are needed to actually be successful in that career. Um, so that was one thing that we did. Then with the DSS, students were actually informed quite a bit about the civil service exam, uh, you know, procedure, the salaries and, you know, what is the day like and all those things. The third thing that Jackie did for us was a mock interview session and also creating resumes. And she gave us a really good list of action verbs. So that those, all those three sessions were very helpful. And in addition to this, um, I actually invited, and maybe it came through career service, I'm not sure, for the op opioid uh, overdose um, kit that they were offering. And the training was provided to my uh, HDB 403 students. So five of those students got trained in overdose and they got that kit as well. I believe that's called Nalozone, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. right? So those are some of the things that we did and I'm really thankful to Career Services for doing all those four things because my students loved it, um, you know, and they gave me a really good feedback on all the, all the guest speakers that were there and everything that was discussed, so. Oh, thank you for the shout out. Yeah. Uh, we also got to collaborate with um, Sharon Griffin uh, in graduate admissions office too to come in to talk about the process, what it looks like. Um, and they're, they're so open uh, to even if you're applying for other schools to, to provide you know insight and support and stuff too. So um, it's wonderful that we get to collaborate to go into classroom, uh, not just the faculty, but bringing in alumni, bringing in employers, bringing in you know graduate admissions office and everything too. So thank you for uh, sharing some highlights. And I'm not sure, I don't think Mark is on the call today, is he? I didn't see. Um, so I'll just highlight a, a couple of things that we do um, with the technology department, uh, excuse me, I should say tech, uh, tech ed, um, is that we um, collaborate um, in a couple of different classes and, and a couple of opportunities in a uh, teacher candidates uh, progression, um, one of which, you know, before they get into their student teaching, coming in and just helping develop those skills to be able to uh, apply for student teaching. So uh, how to do the resume, the cover letter, um, and requiring those types of opportunities. Um, and just having a moment to, to reflect upon, you know, all the transferable skills that they've developed along the way, even before getting into the classroom. So, so many people um, have these great part-time jobs, involvement and stuff too. Uh, we also, um, I mentioned earlier, um, have done mock interviews for years, uh, even bringing in outside uh, school districts to assist with that process. Um, and then some, just with their capstone, some general Q&A, like what, do, what have you always wanted to know? And just providing that space to ask those questions. Um, and oftentimes we're bouncing ideas off each other because we may have have professionals that this is their second career and they've been in the workforce and so um, we bounce best practices off each other on a regular basis too so um, and they oftentimes are inviting me into um, I got to listen in on the uh, STEM program that they have uh, with kids in our community just hearing the reflections and stuff too it is uh, really been a great opportunity this spring to, to hear more of uh, as well and uh, Jennifer Hill brought me into that discussion along with um, the tech department too so that was wonderful but I'm going to put the mic over to Kristen Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I just wanted to uh, reiterate that chemistry and career services have had a long standing relationship. Um, I've been involved with, um, I think, Gary, uh, Jackie, Mallory, and now um, Christine as the STEM uh, career coach. But we've done things like pizza with professionals. 
um, alumni panels, field trips out into industry, uh, chemistry specific uh, resume workshops with the chemistry club. And these types of programs were amazing. And the students that did attend um, appreciated the experience, but we felt we were not reaching all of the majors and we wanted uh, to make that change. So we switched to like a class-based uh, approach. Um, so last few years, uh, Mallory and now Christine, they come into my freshman uh, seminar course, um, just one visit in October. So we get them at their first um, semester here at college and just kind of introduce them to career services and the, you know, the services they provide, um, set them up with a handshake account and introducing them to the tools um, to see if, if chemistry is the right fit for them based on their strengths. Um, and then we meet with them again in their senior year. So we have a capstone course. So Christine visits uh, twice in their senior year, once in the fall, once in the spring. Um, in November, that first visit, she talks about the career readiness, what employers are looking for, searching for jobs, applying for grad schools, encouraging them to make appointments with her. Um, and then in the spring, she focuses more on like making a plan for after graduation, getting that resume ready and reminding them that she's available uh, for appointments. And I love the way we set it up with the freshman seminar course and the capstone course because um, the faculty do not have to give up um, a lecture. They don't have to give up a lecture on their, you know, organic chemistry reactions or whatever. The career services visits are built into the freshman seminar course and the capstone course. So it's already in the syllabus. Um, and what I like about the capstone course too is our uh, research advisors attend Christine's meeting as well. So they're learning um, and staying up to date on the career services resources so they can help uh, mentor our students. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, speaking of um, freshman seminar courses, I've been going into uh, Psych 111 for a number of years now, um, and even you know different faculty. And we went virtual, um, developed a uh, Blackboard module that they can utilize as well, which was an overview of uh, career services since they were. Um, asynchronous uh, to be able just to get that information and making it a little more interactive. There was a quiz and everything involved. Uh, other times I'm, I'm in there presenting and um, you'll see our calendars explode after, you know, getting into the classroom too. Um, and, you know, one thing that, you know, Mark has talked about is that, you know, every time students are like, why didn't I know about this? <laughs> because it, they might not just be, um, you know, just uh, psychology students in, you know, Psych 111. It might be um, other students or different class years and stuff too. So it's always great to be able to broaden our reach. And it, it's so important that um, we provide equitable access to our resources. So, it, you know, every student is taking classes at SUNY Oswego. Um, not every student is going to, um, you know, have that knowledge ahead of time that should, they should be going to career services, especially if our first generation students, they didn't have uh, people before them saying, oh, you should be doing this, this, and this, and this. So it's just so important that uh, we're meeting them where they're at um, and being able to engage them in a meaningful way. So, and we have lots of examples where we're able to get into the classroom. Um, I would say uh, our colleague Tycho and <laughs> working and collaborating with the School of Business probably uh, wins that trophy this year. I think she had uh, 50 presentations this spring uh, where she got into uh, different classes in the School of Business to be able to engage in uh, a meaningful way as well. Um, and you can see just in the individual career coaching, but also the number of students that apply for opportunities and, and such really is reflected upon um, students being able to engage with us uh, in a meaningful way like that too. Um, I'll put it out to anyone else if they uh, want to take themselves off mic that have had some opportunities as well, or just to put it in the chat, uh, opportunities that you've had to collaborate or even on your own look out for services, have embed some um, career education into the classroom uh, as well. Uh, please feel free to uh, share out um, too. And I see that there are a number of things in the chat already. So Christine, if you uh, saw any that you wanted to share out too, please feel free to do so. I'm going to raise my hand, Jackie. Thank you. Um, not a problem. And I must tell everybody that I am so thankful for Jackie that even my daughter, who is the most doubting, judging girl in the world, and those faculty who've had her in the past is Melinda McCabe. Um, 
her career, she could not believe she actually could say she had a career because she came and talked to classes for, actually she has two careers, um, uh, classes a couple of times, I think, Jackie, mm -hmm. and she adores you. I'm just saying, you're her <laughs> new best friend. Anyway, um, from a department that is so career oriented and we're the, we get the students who parents say, why do you wanna go into theater? Go get a real job. It is very difficult. I know that we have a very high rate of placing professional tech people. Absolutely. Everything from our students spending a full semester at Radio City Music Hall um, doing lighting and sound and bringing in people. It is really difficult not to put into our classrooms career oriented, but we have to like sugarcoat it for them because they don't get it because a lot of the things we do, um, especially what I do is no one sews anymore. Why do I have to learn sewing? So it's going out there and showing how many different jobs they can do. I think actually this past year has been very painful for theater technicians. Um, actors can do voiceovers and wonderful video where we're moving them into film and so on, but our technicians were lost. Um, that is our biggest challenge, I think and going across the curriculum to communications and to cinema screen studies. And um, even the social sciences have been wonderful for these kids, but it's keeping that momentum up, I think is our biggest problem. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's one of those things that I wrote down with big letters. Um, thank you for whoever started uh, mentioning the freshman seminar course. I have been saying that for years and they're like, oh, we've got too much to do or they get seminar in junior and senior years. Freshman, freshman has got to, and I, I don't know how to um, push that any more than I have. Uh, except for um, saying, Jackie, come to the classroom to, for me. And Kristen, come to our majors minors meeting. Can I schedule you guys? This is another voice to be heard. So I, mean, I, I don't mean to ramble on, but this is a really, like I said, um, a hard task in a major that parents say, don't do that. You'll never get anywhere. And uh, Tycho, you're on. Do you want to pop on and uh, say a few words about uh, your transition? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tycho, and I'm one of the career coaches in career services as well. For the past two years, I've been here, and I've worked with students interested in business industries. Um, but, and it hasn't really officially been announced to schema, um, but um, Julie and Jen are aware that I am transitioning to be the career coach for students interested in communication, media, and the arts. So um, I loved everything that you just shared, Judy. <laughs> so I would love to work with you and any, anyone else on this call. And like, I'm loving everything that Christine and Jackie have shared today too. They're two awesome people that I get to work with every day and I learn from all the time. So yeah, thanks Jackie for letting me hop on and say hello. You're welcome. Um, and the great thing about that too, you know, folks um, in the school of business still have um, an opportunity. We are hiring um, in the midst of it right now. Thanks Tycho is uh, chairing um, a career coach for business, but Tycho will still be. Opportunities uh, that are coming up. Um, so I'm going to keep us moving along, but there'll be additional discussion uh, at the end as well. Um, but Christine has got some uh, great best practice and models to share with you to get wheels turning to think about where we could go and what the future might look like and, and how we can continue to engage uh, and collaborate. 
Thanks, Jackie. So yeah, we realized that the focus of this presentation is really on embedding career education into the classroom. But I also think um, from our side of things um, with career services, we also see the importance of really just creating a career focused community across campus. Um, and so a little piece of that is embedding career education into the classroom, but um, it might be additional things outside of that um, as well. And I'm excited to share with you today a couple of cool models that I have found in the research that I have done. Um, and one of them is in expanding um, our graduate outcomes um, and the information that we can share with um, the campus, um, prospective students. Um, we do a really great job right now of collecting information, analyzing it, um, and including it on our website, um, but maybe directly collaborating with folks a little bit more um, to be able to utilize that information. Um, Clemson University, as you can kind of see um, that I have highlighted here, has a interactive um, application for their graduate outcomes where you can actually click through the information and it changes the tab will automatically update um, the semester, um, whether they were successful in finding employment, where they were in grad school. Um, and so this is a um, this is a life goal for me as I collect our first destination and graduate outcomes information for the institution within my role. Um, not sure what this is and what what this priority is uh, in terms terms of the work that I do, but I do feel that interactive um, information can be um, helpful, not only just for career services, but um, for departments to be able to show where their um, students are going for, um, you know, orientation and admissions. Um, I feel that the return on investment um, within the value of higher education is being questioned more and more. And a lot of times we look at the graduate outcomes and where students are successful as part of that. Um, and so I'm excited to continue to learn about graduate outcomes in my role and how we can um, expand on sharing that information across campus and possibly someday um, creating an interactive application as Clemson has done, but always really loving to see the amazing things that other institutions have done um, to kind of embed career education and really focus on um, career um, kind of community. Um, so yeah, Clemson, <laughs> open to connect with them at some point in the future to learn about that application. Um, another um, often one that uh, we talk about a lot um, that I have actually had the honor of working with directly at my previous institution um, at the University of South Carolina are uh, career champion or career, uh, career influence programs. Um, so these programs started out um, with faculty and staff across um, campus that were interested in learning more about um, career education and career development and how they could infuse um, things into their classroom, but also how they could to make sure that they were best equipped with the knowledge and the tools to have conversations that were already happening with students. So if a student comes to you as their, um, because you're their direct supervisor, maybe you're doing research with them, you might be already having conversations with students about their post-graduation plans or looking for an internship and utilizing the research skills that they just gained with the work that you were doing with them um, that semester. And so really um, providing a structure around that and helping educate um, our faculty as well as other staff in other departments across campus um, with this. Uh, and so for the Career Champions Program, um, a lot of institutions um, are working on something similar um, or within this. Um, so if we jump to the next slide, um, we'll see that Career Champions programs are very common in higher education. Um, this is a small breakdown of Career Champions is becoming um, pretty common for many institutions to create a program like this. Um, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do so, um, you know, in the near future with um, the career services team, um, given um, that we have amazing faculty and staff that are interested in learning more um, and have already shared with us those conversations that they're having with students. Um, so just another best practice model that we're seeing kind of out there in our career services world. Uh, career assignments and courses. Um, this is one that can be um, 
maybe more easily done than the past two models that I shared with you. Those are larger conversations and will be robust things that we'll look at in terms of department and even beyond, but career assignments and courses, this is something that you can work directly with the career coach um, that represents your industry area. So if you are interested um, in us, you know, looking at your um, syllabi or your syllabus to see maybe how assignments can be changed so that you're focusing more on those um, career competencies. Um, we see a lot of, uh, professors and a lot of faculty doing group presentations so that they have not only the teamwork, but they also have the oral communication that they're working on as well. Um, but looking at maybe some of these other ones, you know, critical thinking, are you giving them case studies or maybe are you giving them a problem that they have to solve and kind of leaving the parameters really wide open of what they do with the assignment to see kind of where they go with it. Um, and so there are definitely assignments that are focused on those career readiness skills um, or those career readiness competencies that we can help you embed into your courses, as well as specific career assignments that really um, hone in on that career and self-development competency. Um, so you'll see at the bottom, I just grabbed some really quick ones, um, but a career exploration assignment um, where they're learning about different occupations and they're using, what can I do with a major? And as Jackie mentioned earlier, to learn what they can do um, with their major and kind of assess that with their interests. Um, LinkedIn profile creating a LinkedIn profile um, and utilizing that maybe in their internship or job search, starting to connect with folks. We all know that um, networking, as much as students hate that word and are scared of it, we know that networking is extremely important. And so helping them start a LinkedIn profile and um, helping them develop maybe a foundation for that to start networking, a resume checklist so they can self-review or you can do a partner review in class with resumes to make sure they have what employers are looking for, um, doing research with um, career fairs or events that are coming up to make sure that they're educated on um, what employers do um, and have thought a little bit about the mission and the vision um, or the positions available. So they have those conversation starters a little bit more prepared based off of those research. Um, so there is a lot that we can do in terms of career assignments um, and embedding them into your courses um, to help support our students, um, both with their career and self-development competencies, but all of the uh, eight career readiness competencies that we have looked at today. Um, job tracks, as we have talked about in the past, a few of you had mentioned them, also talking about virtual um, job tracks um, because of the COVID world that we're in and the uncertainty of what things will look like um, soon, um, virtual job tracks being, um, or career tracks being an option as well, connect, um, connecting with a career coach and um, possibly connecting them with the industry experts that you all know. Uh, we realize that some of you, uh, many of you have expertise in the field and have connections in the field with employers and we would love for you to share those with us and help us make those connections um, so that we have the opportunity for them to join, um, you know, handshake our career um, platform or also setting up some of those career tracks as students um, might be interested in. Um, I think Chris, Kristen had mentioned um, kind of working with career services in the past. So we obviously see that as a best practice here, but we also see the virtual job tracks as a best practice um, or a model that a ton of other institutions have utilized. Uh, and so if we jump to the next, I just tried to provide some visuals of different institutions that are doing different things. Obviously, each institution has different uh, resources and different priorities and whatnot, but there are a lot of um, career education and career community um, trends and uh, things that are happening in our world. And we always love to share them with faculty. Um, so they're aware of different things that we can help them with um, and focusing on kind of embedding career education in the classroom and just career into the experience at SUNY as we go for every student. Um, so they have that opportunity. They all have that same access to the information and the knowledge. Thanks, Jackie. You're welcome. So we could talk all day and would love to, you know, um, you know, highlight, you know, the, more in detail what those programs are. But um, we also think that we have so much, you know, expertise and ideas on campus. So we're hoping to, uh, for the next few minutes, just uh, get your ideas and uh, juices flowing. So um, there's a neat thing called Padlet. Um, we, as I just share, I went to the website itself. Um, <coughs> so Christine is going to share the Padlet. And what it is, is it's kind of like writing your ideas down like in a post-it note and putting it on the wall, but this is virtual. 
Um, so we want to hear from you. Um, how are you engaged uh, or how are you interested in engaging uh, with our office, you know, more this coming year or continued um, for those of you that we already work extensively with, you know, what kind of uh, things do you want to continue to work on this year? There might be some folks online that uh, might want to do that as well. So talk to them about how to engage with the Padlet. Sure. So Jackie, because you've shared it, you should be good to go. So I shouldn't have to share my screen because it looks like you have it pulled up. So um, for anyone that is new to Padlet, it's just kind of like an idea sharing board um, similar to other tools out there. So if you see the pink plus or this pink circle with the white plus sign in the bottom right, um, if you just click on that, um, you can go to um, click on that and then you can put your name in and kind of the thought that you had about how you'd like to embed career education into your course, how you'd like to kind of further, um, you know, work with the career services or the career coach um, that you, um, uh, that represents your industry area. So if you just kind of want to um, include maybe some of the takeaways, uh, we're just really looking to engage folks here with what they're interested in taking away from today and kind of moving forward with our amazing team of career coaches. So feel free to um, go ahead and hit that plus and start adding. And because we're live, Jackie, um, they should all start popping up as folks include them. I think I have Grammarly on here. So you can see the way that I'm typing in and everything, um, that you can be anonymous, um, you can add lots of different things in here too, so. You can also feel free to unmute yourself um, if you kind of want to talk through it. Um, this is Padlet is just kind of another way, but if you'd like to unmute yourself and um, share a takeaway or something that you're interested in engaging um, with career services on and more in the next year, you can as well. neat thing too is that um you can add comments to each other as well yes um judy i just saw your message so if you go to this link that i just threw in there you should see the plus sign um in the um bottom right let me know if you don't see it and i can further assist you All right, so we have a few people. So we said invite you for sessions on specific topics. Yes, um, we can do something very similar to what we started with today and talking with students about what employers are looking for and going over the NACE competencies. We can obviously talk with them about a variety of different um, career development topics, whether that is exploring careers or exploring majors, um, starting to think about what experience um, you, uh, you know, what, what experience you could uh, take advantage of while you're at Oswego that um, matches what employers are looking for and how to find that experience. Um, I know we have have some Excel folks on the call. So I can mention that I know Tina has also um, joined me for presentations in the past. Uh, Tina Cooper is our internship coordinator here at SUNY Oswego. Um, and so we can kind of um, complement each other's work and come in and talk about internships and other ways that students can um, get involved to gain those skills and the offerings that that office um, has as well. Um, and uh, variety of topics, uh, anything and everything pretty much career related we talk about, resumes, cover letters, interviewing, prepping for career fair, salary negotiation, prepping for, you know, a graduate school search, a job search. Uh, so yes, please feel free to engage with your career coach um, and schedule something for um, them to come in as well as sending um, your advisees um, to us for help. Referrals are amazing. Um, we find a lot of success too if you email us or CC us on the referral so that we can uh, help that student um, feel comfortable in coming in and engage with them, um, helping them kind of take that next step mm -hmm. to set something up with us. So love those ideas. Uh, thank you for uh, throwing those in there. Um, and like Jackie said, we could talk about this um, forever. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have all of the time in the world. Exactly. I uh, wanted to kind of throw some uh, things out too. Um, Lynn Blanchfield in the fact or in the history department as well. We've uh, collaborated and, and gone through training for several negotiation workshops through AAUW um, and offered them in collaboration together for everyone on campus. Um, and, and oftentimes too, there's some great things going on uh, in the department. You know, sometimes we have some funding that can assist you as well. So uh, Candace uh, was uh, gracious enough to invite me to 
um, a internship session. She brought a number of our internship sites in our local community uh, together virtually, uh, but we've also done it in person and we've got pizza and we um, were able to, you know, host it during lunch and students didn't have to miss out. They still got food and got to interact in, in a more casual way, in a more welcoming way, uh, even with uh, folks uh, in order to, to meet and, and network and, and build those connections. So lots of fun, awesome opportunities. Dun, dun, dun couple more things as we uh, wrap up today. Um, but next steps, we started to talk about that already in the discussion. I'm going to share out um, our different industry career coaches. So I uh, introduced myself in the beginning, but uh, my industry area of expertise is education, public and human service fields. That's me, Christine Barkley, working with our STEM and healthcare uh, industry. So anyone that's interested in having me come in for a presentation or talking further about embedding career education uh, into the course can feel free to reach out to me at any time. And then I guess we're kind of announcing it officially here, but Tygo Kelly, Communication, Media, and the Arts, who will also be supporting uh, business folks. Uh, we also have uh, Mary Busby joining us. Uh, Christy Wynn uh, is currently interim dean of students and will be through the fall semester. So we're lucky to have Mary back with us. Uh, she worked with us in her undergrad role. And now she's finishing up a master's degree uh, in higher education. Uh, she has joined us as an uh, industry coach in exploratory and undeclared. And then da, 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 we are hiring our next superstar in business. Uh, and don't forget Gary Morris is here with us as well, um, who can support uh, students too, as they are um, looking for opportunities in business. Uh, he's been working uh, really closely with our CMA students throughout this year as we uh, had that vacancy too. So uh, please connect with us. We're always looking for ways to, to collaborate, uh, to embed career education, um, and not just uh, in the classroom with faculty, but also advisement, um, working with your uh, peer advisors, if you'd like, as well. Um, we have done uh, some really cool workshops, um, even on strengths development uh, with our different cohorts of student leaders on campus. So uh, the peer to peers in the Counseling Center uh, collaborated with us even last fall um, in our um, staff development and, and did some focus work about um, strengths development. Uh, but you know, your peer advisors uh, develop, helping them being able to have those conversations with students that they meet with too. Because we know students talk to their peers and talk to their advisors uh, more often than they're coming in uh, and connecting with the career coach too. We've got uh, this great resource too. some things to think about even with your first year students ways that they can really start to get engaged we hear during open houses sometimes too that oh we don't need career services until junior senior year to find a job no no no. <laughs> it starts with making sure you make an informed decision um, about your uh, experience here and your future career um, and life goals. Um, so there's this really awesome bucket list that we share uh, during orientation as well to get them thinking about how they can uh, really start to engage in their um, career management um, early on uh, as they're coming in as a student at SUNY Oswego. Um, we know that we're wrapping up a little over on time, but just to let you know that we started to develop some Blackboard modules, investigating how to be able to share these out for folks to embed it into their uh, own um, classroom uh, and Blackboard modules if you'd like, even if it's, you know, uh, in addition to what you're doing, just to give them a resource. Um, so anywhere from, you know, resumes to cover letters to um, developing your LinkedIn. So we have a number of resources that we developed this year. Um, to help our navigators in the competencies, some of which we've started to share out too with uh, faculty, but coming soon to you. Um, and here's how you can connect with us. Dun, dun, dun. Our website, your phone number, send us an email. Feel free to even message career coaches directly. Um, and we're happy to um, connect and work. Um, and thank you all for uh, joining us today. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and John, thank you for uh, inviting us in and hosting. Thank you. We'll stop the recording and we're going to have to exit from the session just to get the video rendered and so we can start the next session, which will be in about two minutes. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Good Bye. session.